Good morning, fourth graders. My name is Caitlin Robinson, and I am a fourth grade math teacher at Nebo Elementary School. And I'm gonna be with you today to talk about word problems, because I know that is everybody's absolute favorite thing, right? I know it is for my fourth graders. They're jumping for joy right now. Um, I wanna tell you what our standard is gonna be. Hope you can see this okay. Um, our standard is 4.OA.3, which means I can solve multi-step word problems. And we can also use all four of the operations. So we can add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And that word multi-step, we all know means there's probably gonna be more than one step to get our final answer. So it's important for us to follow through and really break apart those questions. Make sure we're answering that final question, okay? So that's what we're gonna practice today. And we are gonna use this problem. Oh, I'm gonna get a little bit too big. Hold on just a second. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put it right here on our board. Let's see if I can move this where you can see it a little bit better. All right, let's read it together, okay? It says, Sawyer uses eight to 12 beads for each necklace she makes. What is a reasonable number of beads she will use to make eight necklaces? So I know Sawyer is my daughter and she's three years old and she loves to make bracelets or necklaces or anything like that. So this problem, I'm sure a lot of you are making can relate to it. You've made a necklace or you've made a bracelet before. So what does it mean if it says, what is a reasonable number of beads? What does that word mean, reasonable? If something is reasonable, it means it makes sense, okay? So what is a reasonable number of beads she will use? So what number would make sense that she would be able to use, okay? So this reasonable, doesn't mean we're gonna get a very specific answer, and you're gonna see what that means in just a minute, okay? So let's take apart this first sentence that it gave us. It says, Sawyer uses eight to 12 beads for each necklace, okay? So I'm gonna draw a little picture here, and I am not an artist, so no laughing, okay? So if I have a necklace here, and I'm gonna use this is my daughter's board, so she has all of these little alphabet letters. So I'm going to pretend that these are our beads, okay? So Sawyer makes a necklace. Here's my necklace. For this necklace, I'm going to use eight beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, whoop, seven, Eight. So there's my beautiful necklace with eight beads, okay? But it says she can use eight to 12. What does that mean, eight to 12? Could I use eight? Yes. Could I use nine? Yes, because it's in between eight to 12. So if I had eight and I have 12 over here, I could use eight beads, I could use nine beads, I could use 10 beads, I could use 11 beads, or I could use 12 beads, because it says eight to 12, so I could use anywhere as long as it's not less than eight or greater than 12. It has to be in between those two numbers. So it has to be in between eight and 12. And we know that she is going to make eight different necklaces. Okay. So if I have, say I have another necklace here. On this necklace, I could use eight beads, nine beads, 10 beads, 11 beads, or 12 beads. So for this one, I'm going to use nine.
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So on that necklace, I wanted to use nine. So we're gonna keep going and she's gonna make eight necklaces. So this necklace could have 10, it could have 11. She could choose to put 12. So every single necklace, she could make a different amount of beads on it, as long as it had between eight and 12 beads. Couldn't be less than eight, couldn't be greater than 12. So that's what I mean about how this problem isn't gonna give us a very one specific answer. Because if we made them all with eight beads, we're gonna get a different answer than if we made all the necklaces with, say, 10 beads, okay? So, when I'm gonna take these off. I'm gonna erase my beautiful necklaces. So for us to figure out what would be a reasonable amount of beads she would need, we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out what is the least amount of beads she could use, and we need to figure out what is the greatest amount of beads she could use. And how we would do that is we know that she has to use between eight to 12. So is eight beads our least amount she could use or our greatest amount she could use? Good, eight is our least amount because eight is our smaller number, okay? Ooh. So we know she could use eight beads and how many necklaces is she trying to make? Eight necklaces. It says she will use to make eight necklaces. Okay. So we know that in order to figure out how many beads she would use the least amount. So if she made all eight of those necklaces and she used the least amount of beads. So every single necklace that she built, she put eight beads on. They were all the same. So that's why we can do eight times eight. And we know that eight times eight is 64. So 64 is the least amount of beads that she could use. Let's say that I didn't know what eight times eight was right off the bat, because our eights, they're pretty tricky. What could I do? Um, our, my kids at Nebo, we list our multiples of eight. So let's do that for just a minute. So we're just gonna count up by eight. So we have eight, count up by eight again, 16, 24, eight more, 32, eight more, 40, 48, 56, 64. So each time we just went up by eight. And when I go back to figure out what eight times eight is, I just need to count eight of my multiples. So we have one, because eight times one is eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that eight times eight is 64. Okay. I'm going to erase this for just a minute. Now we need to figure out what our greatest amount is going to be. So what is the greatest amount of beads she could use? 12, good. So if she built all eight necklaces, because she's only making eight, and she used 12 beads on every single one of those necklaces, we know that we can do the problem 12 times 
8, okay? And I should not have erased my list because we could have kept going until we got to the 12th multiple of 8. But I'm also going to show you a different way because we know since this is 12 times 8, I could also break this apart and use our area model for, mul for multiplication to figure out what that answer is, what the product of 12 times 8 is, okay? So I know that since 12 is a two-digit number, I'm going to break my area model into two places, a place for the ones and a place for the tens. And I am going to write 12 in expanded form. So I know that 12 in expanded form looks like this. 10 plus 2. And then I'm going to put my multiplication sign because we're multiplying. And we are multiplying by 8. So I'm going to put my 8 out here on the side. Okay. And then we can multiply. So tap. I teach my kids to tap if they need to. It kind of helps them see it. 8 times 10. So 8 times 10 is 80. And then we're going to do 8 times 2. 8 times 2 is 16. And right now we found two partial products. And we are going to add those two partial products together to get our final product or our answer to that multiplication problem. Okay. So I'm going to stack and add my partial product. So I have 80 and I have 16. And when we add those together, we know that 0 plus 6 is 6 and 8 plus 1 is 9. So the greatest amount of beads she could use is 96. Okay? And we're going to go one step further, because I'm going to pretend like this is a multiple choice question. So I'm going to give you guys some answer choices, and we're going to talk about which one of those answer choices would be reasonable, which one would make sense, okay? So I'm going to give us three choices. And I'm going to say 59 beads, 72 beads, or 104 beads, okay? So let's talk about each one of these choices for a minute. Choice A says 59. So would 59 beads be a reasonable answer? No. And we know, it's, we can explain why, because we know that the least amount of beads she could use for this problem is 64. So f our answer cannot be less than 64. And 59 is less than 64. So I know that I can cross out A, because that is not reasonable. That doesn't make sense. Let's look at 72. Is 72 less than 64? No. Is 72 greater than 96? No. So 72 seems to be in between our least amount and our greatest amount. So I'm going to leave that alone for just a minute. Okay, and I'm going to look at C. C says 104. Is 104 less than 64? No. Is it greater than 96? Yes. So would it be, would it make sense, would it be reasonable that the number of beads she's going to use is greater than what we said was our greatest amount she could use? No. Because 96 is as high as we can go. If she makes eight necklaces, 
with the max number of beads, it's going to be 96. So it can, our answer cannot be greater than 96. So we can cross out 104. So what we have left is 72. And that is a reasonable answer because it is in between our least amount and our greatest amount. Okay, it's in between those two. So it is greater than our least amount and less than our greatest amount. So if it's in between those two, that means it's following those rules and it's reasonable. It makes sense. Now, is 72 the only answer that we could have? Absolutely not. Any number in between our least amount and our greatest amount, we could say, we could come up with the argument that it would be reasonable because it's in between our least and our greatest. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I'm sure I made a mistake in this video somewhere. So just overlook that because I am human, right? Thank you so much. Know that I love you. And if I'm not your teacher, know that your teacher loves and misses you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.